Now the keyword technique uh, improves learning by about 20 to 25 percent and there's probably about 60, 70 studies on that. Professor Paul Nation is a well-known expert in language learning research and in this video he shares his best advice on learning languages as efficiently as possible. There's, there's a lot of misinformed prejudice about this. One of our PhD students did a piece of research which for me was one of the most important pieces of research in vocabulary studies for the last 20 or 30 years. And she, she found that... So one of the most important aspects of my conversation with Paul Nation was talking about the importance and the efficacy of learning with flashcards or, you know, word cards as he calls them. I didn't use word cards in the beginning, but when I started learning Japanese, I realized that my mind was just a leaking bucket of vocabulary. And so yeah. I started using Anki, uh, like, you know, the, the flashcard program. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I get the feeling that there's sort of a sense that, well, you know, it's you're learning words or maybe sentences if you do sentence cards, but it's it's it feels a little bit artificial. So they're wondering is does this really translate into actual knowledge? And is this actually effective? Can you just like get input and get similar results as opposed to boring flashcards? There's there's a lot of misinformed prejudice about this. People believe every word should be learned in context. You know, you shouldn't be learning words out of context and so on. Well, yeah, yeah, it's good to meet words in context and so on, and you do that through meaning-focused input. But there's a, there's a 120 years of res oh no, 130 years of research of the effectiveness of deliberately learning words in isolation. And recently, and though recently now is probably about 15 years ago, I guess, one of our PhD students did a piece of research which for me was one of the most important pieces of research in vocabulary studies for the last 20 or 30 years. And she, she found that when you deliberately learnt words on word cards, these words were both implicitly and explicitly available. Now, explicitly available means if someone says, what does so-and-so mean, then you can actually go to your mind and tell them what it means. Implicitly available means when you read, and you've only got a split second to bring up the meaning of that word, does word card learning give you that implicit knowledge which you can access in very real time, in short time indeed? And she found that the deliberate learning using word card resulted in both implicit and explicit knowledge. And there are now other studies which have supported that. <laughs> Now, this goes against one of Steve Crash's ideas in that things which are learned deliberately are not available for normal language use. Her research showed very clearly that things which are studied deliberately, vocabulary which is studied deliberately, is available for normal language use. And so that, that's a very important research finding, I think. Then it really speeds up learning, learning in all research. I mean, I've, I've reviewed most of the studies about deliberate learning in my book, Learning Work Happy in Another Language, and the research shows very clearly that things which are studied deliberately are retained in memory, uh, they can be retained for a very long time, and, and all the prejudice against it, but overall, they're not supported by research. And so, you know, Paul and I, we, we really talked a lot about flashcards, and in fact, his arguments were so strong that they pushed me to uh, create what is now the Anki Core decks. Uh, some of you guys have heard about this. These are my flashcard decks that I created for Anki. I'll put a link to this in the description of this video. Now, Paul Nation mentioned something that really surprised me. He introduced a learning technique that a lot of people don't know. It's called the keyword technique. And he said that without this technique, without the ability to use this technique, he would just give up on language learning altogether. And so this technique, he said, improves learning by 20 to 25 percent. Now, there's a there's a vocab learning technique called the keyword technique, which is a rather strange technique, but it's where you you want to learn a word. So, say, let's take Japanese, for example. You want to learn the word agaki, which is a word for postcard. The way you apply the keyword technique to that is to say, well, agaki it begins with the word hag, H-A-G, which is an English word. And now I'll make a a, a visual image in my mind, the visualization that I used was I've been to Taidaiji Temple in, in uh, Nara and there's a picture of a monk, a, a carving of a monk 
who'd been fasting for 40 days or something, are really haggard and thin. And I think of that picture on the postcard. So I'm combining the hag, which is the phonological link, and the picture of the monk on the postcard, which is the meaning link. And then that makes it stick in my memory. Now, the keyword technique improves learning by about 20 to 25 percent. And there's probably about 60, 70 studies on that. Uh, you mean now, if I specifically on the, the keyword technique? <laughs> yes, oh, specifically. Right. Okay, wow. But if I didn't know that technique, I'd, I'd give up learning language now because uh, uh, that technique allows me the words that won't stick in my memory I now have a strategy for making them stick in my memory and the keyword technique helps me do that. I also asked Paul a, a question that I often ask people is um, if you had a year to learn a language then what would you do what would be the program and so he gave a, a long answer but the first two things that he mentioned where you have to use a frequency list of vocabulary as a guideline and you have to do some extensive reading too. From next week, you have no responsibilities anymore. Just your full-time job is going to be learning a language. Let's say it's going to be something fairly hard like Arabic. You have one year to reach, let's say, C1. So what would you do on a daily basis? What resources would you use? Well, I'd get hold of a frequency list of items in the language and I'd make sure that I that was a rough guide to what I learned because um, in English, the first 10 words covers 25% of every text. The first uh, 50 words covers, our uh, first 100 words covers about 50% of the words in any text. So I'd be getting onto that high frequency stuff as fast as I could, uh, doing deliberate study of them and learning. There's clear cost benefit analysis in, in choosing vocabulary uh, in terms of its frequency and usefulness so that learners get the best return for their learning. Uh, because um, I had to learn to read, then I'm certainly be beginning early on on picking that up because I'd be wanting to get meaning focused input through reading as quickly as possible, and uh, I'd be looking around for material which is written more at my level. And lastly, we also talked about, you know, when people learn languages, it, it's often the case that even if you learn for a long time, even advanced language learners, they make mistakes in terms of pronunciation, but also in terms of the language structure, the grammar. And so how do you prevent this? And how do you learn a language in a way that you prevent making these mistakes down the line? And so he talked about the importance of really getting things right from the start and how frequent vocabulary, I think, uh, you know, survival vocabulary actually facilitates this and also the importance of being able to imitate the pronunciation of a native speaker with audio, for example. One of the requirements of, of early learning and of most learning is that you, you generally, you should have the best chance of getting things right or getting things acceptable, let's put it that way. And I think that as early as possible, you should be try, also trying to get things right. You know, with something like the survival vocabulary for starting off, it's simply memorization of the sentences and then being able to use those sentences and so on. And and you use them with, with a good pronunciation and the best pronunciation and you can do it at that stage, you know, simply by imitation. And, and th that's good. But, but that, uh, it doesn't mean, when I say using a language, it doesn't necessarily mean that you just stumble along and, you know, make tons of errors and do things like that. The clips that you just watched are part of a two-hour conversation I had with Paul Nation. And so I'm going to put the link to the two-hour co conversation I had with Paul Nation in the description of this video. And following my conversation with Paul Nation, I also made... Uh, I started building flashcards based on his advice for Anki. And so if you want to check out these uh, flashcards for multiple languages, uh, there are so many languages available, uh, go to ankicordex.com and I'll put the link in the description and I'll see you next time.